How are prisoners so jacked? This guy seems to have the answer, so let's check it out. Now imagine that you've accidentally dealt creatine in the wrong alley. And because you never do cardio, you gassed out pretty quickly and got caught. Now you've ended up in jail for five years and you've got nothing but time. So right away, I'm going to make my prediction and say that the reason that prisoners are able to get so jacked is literally just because they have the time to. I go to the gym five days a week for about an hour a day and I'm on a push-pull leg split, but I'm sure if I went for three hours and I just worked out all day and then ate all day, I could probably gain more muscle, but do I have the time for that? No. But if I was in prison, maybe I would. You're mostly sitting around and thus you feel the need for activity. So the easiest way to distract yourself is to work out for an hour or two. Now you don't have weights because most prisons don't allow that any longer because people could use it to smash each other's heads in. If I was forced to sit in a cell all day, uh, yeah, I would probably want to work out too. You know, push-ups, just body weight kind of stuff. You know, he was saying most prisons don't allow, you know, dumbbells and that kind of stuff because obviously those could be used as weapons. There's still a ton of ways you can build muscle and a ton of exercises you can do without any weights at all just using your body weight. I made a video about it like a year and a half ago. You can go check that out after this video if you want, but there are a lot of ways to do it. Now, most inmates use a combination of push-ups, creativity, and pull-ups and dips if the prison has some kind of workout facility. So you decide to do the same. Now most people think weights are necessary to build muscle because that way you can stick to the 6 to 20 rep range. For example, if you've gotten stronger and you're then able to do more than 20 reps, you can just increase the weight until you're back at that 6 to 20 rep range. You see, there have been numerous studies that show that we can build about the same amount of muscle with as low as 30% of our one rep max, meaning 30% of the maximum amount of weight we're able to lift for one repetition on a certain exercise like the bench press, for example. A lot of people think that in order to grow muscle, you need to be lifting really heavy for, you know, no more than like 10 reps at max, you know, but somewhere between 6 and 10, maybe 6 and 12. In reality, you can still build muscle doing a low weight for a high amount of reps as long as you're getting close to failure or failure. Now, training at a super low weight for high reps is going to be a lot more difficult than going to failure on, let's say, rep 8, for example. Pumping out 8 reps and hitting failure on rep 9 is way easier than pumping out 40 or 50 reps and, you know, trying to figure out when exact failure is. Uh, but if these guys are sitting in a cell all day, what else do they have going on? Besides push-ups, pull-ups are also common, creative ways to do triceps and biceps as well, like for example filling up a trash bag with water and then doing curls, and abs are also easy to train. So obviously when you're in prison, you got limited resources to work out with, you know, you gotta make work with what you got, you know, there's people are curling trash bags filled with water, you know, using sheets to do tricep pushdowns, people will make excuses why they can't go to the gym, oh, you know, I'm, I'm tired, or, you know, I just don't feel like it, these guys don't have access to a gym, and and they're still making time to work out by filling trash bags with water. I mean, come on, what's, what's your excuse? Come on. The only body parts that are actually hard to train are your legs. That's because these are naturally very strong muscles. But for these muscles, there is a simple solution called plyometrics. Plyometrics are basically exercises where you simply do a movement as explosively as possible, like for example, jumping as high as you can and doing that for a couple of reps. I would find someone that would let me squat them on their back or, you know, pick them up. Now that, that probably wouldn't go too well, but this guy's talking about plyometrics, which is basically explosive exercises. Supposed to slow and controlled, you know, reps, you know, we're talking about like, like jumping, you know, squatting down and, and jumping explosively upwards. That might sound kind of easy, but I don't even know if I could do five reps of jump squats. I mean, I think I'd be exhausted after that. So that definitely sounds like it would work to build some good muscle. I spent three years in prison as a young man. I went in at 138 and came out 181. Solid muscle, no fat. I think it's the elevated testosterone from fear. You're in constant fight or flight mode and exercise is the only thing that helps. Plus I was 17 when I went in. So it was my peak hormone production levels. Okay. So I don't know the science behind that, but I can assume if you're in constant fear, you know, you're in that constant fight or flight mode, I'm sure you could build some solid muscle in there. 
there. I mean, as long as you're getting good sleep, because sleep is really important for recovery, as long as you're able to get some sort of sleep, you know, I'm sure the elevated testosterone from your fight or flight, you know, your fear uh, would probably help. Although I'm not a scientist, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. For most people, working out is an easy way to fast forward an hour or two, just like sleep can sort of feel like a time machine. <laughs> This is the main reason why I think prisoners are so jacked and what we can learn from them. Consistency. Anecdotally, we know that we often see the best results when we're able to consistently keep training for prolonged periods of time. But is this backed by science? In general, it is believed that more volume equals more muscle growth, volume being reps times sets times loads. If you, for example, only show up consistently for two weeks, then don't do anything for two weeks and repeat this cycle, you're going to end up with half the amount of volume than if you would keep consistently training. Basically what he's saying is kind of what I was predicting at the start is that these guys have time to work out all the time. So, you know, consistently working out is going to show you the best results. I mean, if you work out, you know, as a New Year's resolution for a couple of weeks and then you quit, it's basically not going to do anything. I mean, you, you, you're going to lose all your progress and it's going to be all for nothing. So it's all about consistency. And if you're in prison for 5, 10, 15 years, you know, however long, pretty easy to stay consistent at something like that. I think what it really boils down to is doing the proper bodyweight exercises and being consistent with it. I'm interested to find out if he talks about food intake and, you know, protein and all that kind of stuff, because, you know, those are very important things for building muscle. If, you, if you're not eating at all, you know, if you're not getting your protein in, you're not going to build muscle. You're not going to put on any size. I'm interested to see that side of it. You see, a muscle fiber consists mainly of two things, myofibrils and sarcoplasm. Myofibrils are the ones that generally generate force to contract a muscle to, for example, move a weight. All right, so we just talked a lot of science stuff. If you want to go watch the full video, the link will be in the description if you guys want to, you know, really dive into to all that technical stuff. I don't even fully understand all of the muscle science, all that stuff. So if you are interested after this video, check out the full video in the description below. But we're, we're, we're going to move on. Over on the flip side of consistency, you do want to change up something from time to time because over time your body won't really see the same results from the same stimulus. So only if you notice results decreasing, you can for example take a break from lifting, change up the exercises, intensity, amount of sets and much more to jump start your gains again. So he's saying doing the same exercise for too long, you know, your, your body's going to get used to it and you're not going to be able to grow as much. You're going to kind of plateau a bit every couple months or every so often, you know, you want to change it up a little bit, do slightly different exercises, you know, in prison, it's going to be hard to do that. You kind of got to do what you can do, but you know, if you have access to a gym, with different machines and different weights, all these kind of things to help build muscle, definitely change it up every so often. Let's say on a pull day, you know, you're doing barbell bicep curls, you know, and that's been going great for you for a while, but you've stopped seeing results, you've stopped progressing, you know, maybe try a different type of curl, you know, maybe a cable curl or a machine curl or just something that's a little bit different, still hitting the same muscle, but just a little bit different that your body will have a different reaction to. That could possibly help you get out of a plateau. It is speculated that lower reps do cause more fatigue. They for sure seem to cause more injuries, which often causes you to take longer training breaks. And we're almost certain that they do cause more fatigue to get the same amount of muscle growth. I don't like to lift super, super heavy when I go to the gym. I'm not a power lifter. I don't train power lifting. You know, on some exercises, on some sets, I'll go a little bit heavier for maybe a set of like five to 10. There are a lot of exercises where I like to go up to sets of 15 to, you know, 20 even because it just feels a lot safer. If I'm going to be doing certain movements with my shoulders. You know, I want to try to protect my shoulders. For me, my shoulders have always kind of hurt a little bit you know they've oh i'm sure most of you guys can relate if you guys go to the gym but i like to take it easy on my shoulders i don't like to go super super heavy so when i do shoulder work i drop the weight down and i do you know higher sets higher reps and that makes it feel a lot better for me you know i don't feel pain but i'm still feeling the muscle engagement and so i'm able to take that to failure yeah it's a little more difficult you know i could just do heavy weight but then I'm going to hurt myself and then I'll be out of the gym for three weeks to a month or two months and then I'm losing progress anyway. You either don't get enough food to bulk up, but this would mean that you end up burning fat and this often leads to a more muscular appearance, even though you might even have less muscle. Or if you're able to bulk up, you will look bigger because of the added mass. 
Though one thing is certain, the food is relatively consistent. All right, so we're starting to talk about food now. It definitely depends on your body type. You know, if you go into prison and you're fat and overweight, then, you know, you can just eat less, you know, make sure you're still getting your protein in, but just eat less and work out and you're going to burn all that fat away. You're going to have crazy muscle underneath. But if you are super small and you go into prison, you can't just work out all day and not eat and build any muscle. That's not how it works. I learned that the hard way for myself. I worked out, you know, as a teenager for a couple of years on and off, but I wasn't really making progress because I wasn't eating. You know, for me, I started underweight. The only way that I was going to build muscle and put on size and strength was if I fed my body the calories that it needed to build up this muscle. So it really just depends on your body type. Something like having about the same breakfast and lunch every day. This makes tracking calories a lot easier. If you're not losing weight and you want to lose weight, simply remove something that you normally eat. And the exact opposite is true for bulking. Not seeing results, simply add some more food and thus calories. I mean, personally, I eat pretty much the same thing every day. Uh, I don't like trying to decide, oh, do I want this today? Do I want this? Or mm, maybe I can do this. That's too much work for me. I am eating so much food. I'm on a bulk right now. I'm eating about 3,500 calories a day. That doesn't sound like too, too much but that's a lot of different meals. The most I can eat in one meal is like 1500 calories, but that's a huge meal. I like to keep my meals to about a thousand calories. We're talking about three and a half big meals a day, sometimes four if it's a little bit less calories per meal, but deciding what to eat every single meal, every single day, that's a lot of work and it's a lot of time. So I like to normally, you know, I'll go through stages where I'll eat different things. I will go weeks, if not months eating pretty much the same exact thing every day. You know, a few changes here and there. I'm literally eating the same thing every day. You know, I'm like a dog. I just eat, I just, <laughs> I just, I just eat the kibble that I'm given, you know, just, just to, just to get by. Food for me is literally just fuel. So, you know, I, I don't want to decide what I want to eat. I just want to make the decision once a month and then just stick with it and, you know, get going. So I guess I'm living like a prisoner. So, you know, if I ever, you know, end up in the slammer. Now it's also obvious that most people in prison are no strangers to taking a legal substances that could be harmful to their health. I'm of course talking about drugs under which we can put anabolic steroids like testosterone. And as you probably know, testosterone is insanely good at building extra muscle. This could explain why some of the prisoners recover quickly enough to pack on size despite the lack of proper sleep and nutrition and training equipment. He's saying another possible reason for prisoners being so jacked is literally just steroids. Being on something like testosterone or any other type of steroid like that uh, you know it's going to help with your recovery it's going to help build muscle obviously you still need to work out you still need to eat you still need you know th those basic things but uh, you know being able to take substances like that uh, is going to help so basically to sum it up uh, body weight exercises eating consistently uh, working out pretty much all day every day and getting good recovery and possibly taking drugs that's how prisoners get so jacked go check out the full video link in the description this guy's really cool makes really good content uh, go show him some love but anyway thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one Peace out.